you can't use your, your current standards, so you've got to completely rewrite the rule book. This project has been top secret from day one. It's something that is very much out of our comfort zone. There was a stall and a stumble. Traditional, no, I think it would be, uh, it'd be hard stretch to say it's traditional. We are on the cusp here, I think, of changing the direction We've of the We've done every other industry. kind of boat, but this was just a new challenge and a really exciting one. We were one. constantly challenging their assumptions. If it's not hard, we're not trying hard enough. We actually reached a crisis point. If, if we can't do this, then who, who can? The R class is pretty damn good. <laughs> There's always rumours about new product. Um, some of them turn out to be true, some of them don't. The whole thing's been shrouded in mystery. What, what is this? What is this boat? The original idea for a new range of boats, a small boat that would bring people across into Princess who wouldn't uh, previously have considered Princess. And we'd been playing with the idea for, for some time and it, and it hadn't really gone anywhere uh, until our new chairman, until Anthony Sheriff joined us uh, a couple of years ago. He sort of reignited that conversation. The first day I came in, I sat down with the team and uh, Kieran came in and we both said, gosh, wouldn't it be cool to do a, a small boat? Um, and if I rewind back to that exact moment, it was a, uh, an idea to do something which was small, and powerful and sexy and cool, and cool in a Muhammad Ali, Steve McQueen kind of a way, that kind of cool. You want to look at it and go, gosh, that's beautiful. Something that you wouldn't expect from Princess, something that was a little bit more radical. We need to do interesting things. We need our products to be a bit fizzy, to be special, to be different, to have new ideas and new technologies. And at the time, I remember the organization going, mm, that's not really us. Yeah, well, Undoubtedly, you know, I had reservations at the beginning of the project. You know, it was something that is very much out of our comfort zone. If I'm honest, um, as one of the, the old guard, the, the, the saltier of the sea dogs, um, I was a bit cynical, really. And you know, inevitably, uh, we're trying to search for a different customer, so it's a little bit, it's, it, it's, it's uncomfortable. The R35 is not fundamentally what a princess customer would, would expect. The people who buy princesses know what they want. It was key from the beginning that it has to do, it has to be a princess. We had to really look at what do we stand for and how do we make this project a true princess project. How can you revolutionize boat design without sacrificing the qualities that make a princess a princess? It was bringing in the very best that the industry had to offer in a very, very unique and powerful way. But you had the likes of Ben Ainsley Racing Technologies, you had Pin and Farina. These guys were out to achieve something uh, in their respective fields. On this project, the biggest challenge has probably been um, balancing the, the desire for performance and luxury. Um, and they're, they're a trade-off. We're, we're coming at the, the project from two completely different angles. Well, the boat needs to be usable, it needs to be comfortable. Um, yeah, th this, is, this is not a racing boat, it's, it's a high-performance boat, but it's not a racing boat. You can have a boat which is very luxurious, but it becomes heavier and it goes slower. Um, or you can have a boat that's very light, but it's not very comfortable and it's not very luxurious. Uh, so we went through many iterations of the general arrangement and the two certainly didn't meet. On, uh, on, on the first or, or maybe the fifth iteration. And then it's a kind of system equation. If you put too many equations in the system, you do not have the solution at the end. When we sat down as a group and, and looked at the brief originally, um, foiling kind of jumped out as, a, as an option. Traditionally, hydrofoils on powerboats have just been static and they've, they've, they've helped to increase the efficiency slightly. These not only do that, but they're, they're active, so they, they help control the roll and pitch of the boat and make the boat not only more comfortable, but, but safer and easier to drive. Every single detail. Has been rigorously tested. Optimised. Considered. Refined. It really has been about millimetres. In this teamwork, the interesting point is that the one plus one plus one do not make three make much, much, much more. What we've ended up with is something that is extremely beautiful and very easy to drive, 
at very high speeds and very safe. Now that is something that's pretty outstanding. The, the doubters amongst us really had to take it to sea to, to really get it. A pivotal moment was when myself and a few uh, of my colleagues in, in sales uh, had the opportunity to, to drive the prototype uh, and we did our best to uh, make it fall over. We pushed the boat as hard as we could and, and tried as hard as we could to, to make something misbehave. No matter what we tried, we couldn't, we couldn't break it. There's no way we were going to make that boat um, misbehave. We were punching through waves um, at 40, 40 plus knots um, in total control, in absolutely total control. It was a bit of a, uh, a defining moment in the, in the project and, and uh, the cynics amongst us, and, and, and there were a few, um, all came back pretty excited. It proved to me that we were absolutely on the edge of something very exciting. The, the launch is fast approaching. Um, we are as ready as we probably uh, could be, which is not to say that we are ready. Um, so am I having sleepless nights? Of course I am. Um, you know, we are a month away from Cannes and uh, the boat is, is in build. So my to-do list is a new to-do list every day at the moment, because they're building this 24 seven, they're through the night building. And when you're building a boat for the first time, you do come across issues. We're now at the end stages. Uh, every day is nerve-wracking because you're, you're inevitably always worried, have you got it right? This is exciting. We can do it. We've got to find a way. Uh, and we are 100% confident our boat's going to be in the water at, at Cannes. And as I tell the team, is if it felt relaxed, we're not trying hard enough. It wouldn't be right if I was uh, sleeping well at night at the moment because we've got to get this boat to Cannes. That'll be when people really understand what, what she's all about and, uh, and why we've done it. We've got as close as we can to perfection on this boat and we're really, really excited to see her finished. Many years from now, I'd like to look back on this period in time and say I had a little part to play in, uh, in that boat being around and, uh, and existing. It's difficult to put into words just uh, how exciting this boat feels to, to, to drive. It's cool as can be. I mean, how can you not get excited about it? 